We're back in Edgewood for New Mexico Listens. My name is Irene, and I'm with the League of Women Voters, Santa Fe County. I'm here with the co-coordinator of New Mexico Listens, Santa Fe County, Rakan Bach, and with our skilled technician, Goyo Perez. We're having our second installment in Edgewood. And in this session, you'll see something a bit different again. I want to remind you that this project is joint. The League of Women Voters in New Mexico is partnered with the New Mexico Humanities Council. They in turn have received grant money from the National Endowment for the Humanities. And that's what makes this program work. We had a great time in Edgewood on our last visit in February, and we're proud and happy to be back with Edgewood. I'm going to turn the program over now to Linda Burke, who is the director of the East Mountain Chamber of Commerce. Her partner in putting this all together is Andrea Corvin, who is the director of the Public Library. Turning over to Linda. Thank you, Irene. So we're kind of excited to change up our format a little bit today, and it's gonna be a small group conversation. We may have other people that join us as we go along and uh, we'll welcome anyone who comes and participates. We'll also have our online participants and we will try and alternate back and forth with input from both our in-person group and the those that are online joining us. Uh, we do have a little bit of um, as I said, a, a smaller group today. And so what we'd like to do is to encourage everyone to listen with curiosity and to be really respectful because each and every contribution is vital and important. And, um, and we want to um, honor all of that. And that everyone's stories and ideas are valuable for the community as we are working here on a project that kicks off some visioning for the, the community of Edgewood of what we would like to do as we move forward into our future. So I'm going to pass the mic to Andrea. Good morning. Uh, one thing that we just wanted to let everyone know is uh, we're so very happy to see everyone here in person and also um, online attending virtually. Thank you so much for giving up this beautiful Saturday morning to spend time with us and share your ideas with us. Uh, we wanted to let you know that we still plan on alternating uh, between in-person and online responses. We wanna make sure everyone's voice is heard. And um, I think with that, let's go ahead and get started with our first question. We wanted to begin with kind of a little warm up or icebreaker. And uh, we would like to know, um, what is the one thing that would make your life better? And if you could take a quick little moment either to jot it down or um, let us know in the chat, the webinar chat, what is one thing that would make your life better? And we'll uh, discuss that here in just about a minute. <laughs> Obviously, I don't do this for a living. <laughs> so I'm going to actually um, start over here to my right with Martha Eden, who's one of our local realtors and longtime community participants, and ask you, what do you think would make your life better? Well, as a realtor, I have to say Edgewood really lacks affordable housing. And if we were allowed to have things, like, oh, some maybe some nice fourplexes, that kind of thing. Um, we need more rentals in, in this town. We get calls three or four a day for rentals. We have 75 properties and they stay full. So that's one thing that the town could certainly um, look, I would hope, look forward to uh, achieving in the future. Is, my life is terrific. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly can't think of a thing. <laughs> I think you take full advantage of the Edgewood lifestyle here with your horses and and travels and and so forth let me pass the mic down to mike and have him input. what would make my life better i'm retired i've been in uh well we first came out to edgewood from albuquerque in 85 uh still working 
Um, at the time then, it was uh, some conveniences, a uh, grocery store besides Dinkle's Grocery. Um, but all those things have come into Edgewood now. The um, groceries, the Walmarts, the, the conveniences, um, we're getting Harbor Freight now. Um, so to make my life better, gosh, uh, let my wife get a, a hay burner. Let me let letting her get let me get a hay burner a horse, <laughs> but the um, hay burner that's a horse. So yeah, um, I I love Edgewood. It's I've seen it grown. Um, it's just amazing the different things and the community that we still have. That's the one thing that I like about it the most is the community that we have. Um, and how anybody that comes in here can really just fit in with no problem. Um, what would make it better? Nah. Continued community support. That would be good. Do you want to add something? Um, yes. Well, we're, I'm going to kind of put Sherry on the spot there. We just asked, tell us one thing that would make your life better. Would you care to weigh in or we can wait, come back to you? Do we have any people in the chat that would like to weigh in? No? Okay. Yeah. Well, what would make my life better? I am always strapped for time. I could use um, a time machine. And that's what I would really, really like. Time machine. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And... Um, I guess for me, there's two things that make my life better. New hips, which I'm on the way getting. And <laughs> and probably just um, a little more time to spend with family and, and so forth, because I'm generally pretty busy. Um, but I, I love to be able to travel and see my kids that live in other places and keep things, uh, all, keep all those balls in the air still in Edgewood. So now I guess, Sherry, we've, we've gone as long as we can. We're going to pass the mic to you. What would make your life better? In Edgewood or in general? For you. For you. For in general. It's just an icebreaker. Okay. For in general, um, for me, I was actually at the Special Olympics event, the torch run fundraiser thing this morning. And I was talking to a parent there who said, you know, we really need in this community things for people to do. Um, she was saying, you know, it'd be really nice to have an adult, maybe special needs, um, daycare kind of program or something like that. Some things that we don't still have to drive to Albuquerque for. I kind of came in at the last of years we were talking about, we have some conveniences and some things like that, but, um, I think now recreational things and and support services for um, seniors and kids, um, special needs adults and children. When my son was young, we used to um, have a bowling team and it was a, a, a bowling team of young blind students. And I'd pick them up once a month and we would go bowling. You know, it'd be great to have a bowling alley or somewhere where you could do something like that. We have lots of space out here. We could do like archery tournaments or there's so many things we could do if we could just get organized and do them. And it's kind of ironic we're talking about things that the community could do and, and people wanting things because today of all days is such a busy day in Edgewood. We've got all the soccer kids out there. So we have lots of parents out there instead of here. We've got an arts and crafts fair going on across the street. Um, we've got the torch run going on. So of all days for this to occur, it's a day that happens to be when everyone's really, really busy. Um, so did you wanna add to that? I'm gonna pass the mic back to Mike. <laughs> um. I didn't introduce myself. My apologies. My name is Mike Morrow. I am on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. We have reorganized uh, where we now have seven members. Uh, we've been on hiatus for the last couple of years, mainly because of COVID and other things. Um, but just to let you know, yes, we are looking at um, 
programs, especially this summer for the kids, uh, there's a program called YES, yes, uh, Youth Edgewood Youth Events for Summer. Um, and that will be coming up. There'll be more announcements on that once we start getting that organized. The um, town council has approved that um, for the summer. Um, so I challenge anybody and everybody that's listening uh, and go tell your friends, give, your, give us your ideas on what you want to do here in Edgewood as far as parks and rec. We are doing um, trails. Uh, we're getting um, looking at the parks, looking at the open space um, as far as uh, keeping that natural. Uh, the, the one um, off of Edgewood 7 and windmill is the entrance to that one. Um, so there's lots of things that we are wanting to do. We need to get more input from, from the citizens on what they would like to see as well. And actually that's a really good segue. Um, we were wondering next, uh, what kind of community do you want to live in? And I think that's a wonderful segue, thank you. Um, Linda, did you wanna add anything as well? Did anybody else want to add anything? I know um, you're <gasps> down on that end over there. So I think, Audrey, I'm going to pass it to you. And if you want to, you can weigh in. Okay. Sorry, just transitioning from one thing to another. <laughs> um, Valley View across the street has a really awesome craft fair going on. And it's so great to see everybody just together and not being locked down anymore. And so it's pretty amazing. Um, but what uh, underlying question are we trying to answer? Well, the question that we just posed is what kind of a community do you want to live in? Okay. Well, I think what's important to me and what I see that's important to others is really what I call the Edgewood lifestyle. And that encompasses many different areas. Um, a big thing is the outdoors and the active lifestyle, equestrian trails, um, family activities, and um, seeing Edgewood thrive and grow and not become stagnant, I think is important to people too. Having, um, services I think has always been important to our town and so whatever we need to do to accomplish that there's many different things like infrastructure and and things like that um, economic development let's see a variety of housing so that we can have multi-generational um, people here I know my two oldest children um, can't live here because mommy pushed the birds out of the nest and they can't afford to live here. <laughs> so um, that's very sad. So one is uh, um, in Albuquerque and you know, the crime there is horrible. She's scared when she goes in and out of her apartment, especially at night. And that doesn't make me feel good. So, you know, we need to do something about that to where our kids can live here safely, you know? Um, Let's see, any other general areas? I think that's, I think that's what people want. A lot of recreation and things to do and try to keep the, the families um, here to where they don't have to go into town or into Albuquerque. The community I wanna live in is Edgewood. Um, Edgewood is a great community to live in. Um, people help each other. Neighbors are usually kind or the kind you don't want to talk to, but mostly they're kind. Mostly kind yeah. <laughs> um, I like the small businesses here. I like that um, fun things happen. Like you said, I'm, it's happy, glad to see things opening up and people out and about. It's a beautiful day outside. Um, you know, I was just driving around because um, I just like to drive around and check out new businesses. I'm always amazed at what new businesses we have. And I like to do that. Today, there are tons of people out walking their dogs and dogs out walking without their people. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, this is just a great place to live. The weather's perfect. The people are kind. We have mostly enough services. We have small businesses that, that just really support our community. We now have a governing body, I think, that supports our community. I think we have some great advisory boards. There's plenty of opportunities for you to volunteer and get involved. And so I think Edgewood is the greatest place in the world to live. I certainly agree with that. Um, I've been here 43 years now, and it's uh, having moved almost every two years all my life, I just, uh, I rooted here and I'm happy here. I love it. I love it. Bringing people here. Um, I brag about Edgewood to everyone all the time. I've a wonderful place it is to live. And it really is. And I think we have a spectacular future in front of us. We have a lot of new things happening to us as a town, like the cannabis ordinance that this, this state has taken on. It's going to change some things, not necessarily for the better. But we have to learn how to cope with it. Uh, we have to come together as a community to cope with it. Uh, one of the things about Edgewood that has always been true is the, the vast uh, majority of social uh, and socializing opportunities come in the schools and the churches. Um, Mike just reminded me the Harvest Festival in uh, here at Edgewood Elementary it was attended by practically the whole town, I think. I mean, it was always a fun, fun event and was always packed with people and all the kids always had a wonderful time. So did the parents. But when you get to the point you don't have kids or you're not involved in a church, it's hard to take advantage of socializing opportunities, let's say. So I think that's something that the town can continue to promote. I know the Arts Alliance works toward that, uh, craft fairs, the different things that happen on the uh, soccer field, different events the town puts on. And we need to keep doing a lot of that, I think. Well, I would agree because we have so few facilities here for um, recreation and those types of things that events become our form of recreation and activities here for the community. And it, being part of the chamber, I see those businesses that are coming in, the small businesses, and, and we just got a new ax throwing sport business here in Edgewood. So, I mean, that's kind of fun. <laughs> Indoor recreation, you can do it year round. It's such a totally Edgewood kind of a thing, <laughs> along with archery and horses and so forth. But I'm going to answer the question, what kind of community do I want to live in? And I think that um, there's a reason I, this is the second time I've lived in Edgewood. I chose to come back here because I loved the small town. I loved the dirt roads, as dusty as they can be at times. I love that sense of you're living in the country, but you have all the conveniences of being only an hour from Santa Fe, only 30 minutes from Albuquerque, uh, without all of the big city stuff that that brings. So for me, living here is in a place where people know each other, where people tend to get along, help each other out, whether they know each other or not. If someone's got a flat tire on the side of the road, someone will always stop. And for the most part, you don't need to be afraid of who's going to stop. And um, so, you know, those kinds of things, it's a different world. I love the open spaces that we have here and the long distance views that we have here. I wake up every morning to the sunrise on the Eastern horizon and can't imagine a better way to live than, than here. So I, I kind of think I'm already living in the kind of community that I want and the things that I would like to see changed I'm usually willing to be part of the change. And so um, so are a lot of other people. And so we can create whatever we want. We're still a small town where individual voices still get heard. I think that's kind of important. I thank you everyone for your responses. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to get some input from any of our virtual participants, Rakan. Okay, just checking in. Um, I noticed a couple of themes coming up so far, um, like the affordable housing, safety, maintaining that small town feel, um, pursuing recreational activities, bringing people together, multi-generational, socializing opportunities. Um, what I'm wondering is what are some things that need to happen or how can we make that happen 
to kind of create that kind of change we want to see. Um, does anybody have any ideas for that? Um, yes. I think one of the biggest things that would be helpful is networking, um, not just among our community, but with Santa Fe County, with um, the school district, with all the powers that be, um, you know, maybe some kind of advisory group that that all of the the big players are a part of, um, some kind of a a regional board of some sort to to um, find funding for and opportunities for the things that the whole region needs. You know, Edgewood is kind of like the hub and all the other small little towns are like the spokes coming in. And so I think if we could work with all of the other agencies, maybe to promote um, some of these things that we're still lacking, I think would be helpful because funding is always one of the biggest issues. I like your thought of networking and I see as leadership changes um, that people's voices are being heard and that now we have people in the community who in their own expertise are coming to us and volunteering their time. Um, so for example, yesterday, <clears throat> a community member, uh, Mr. Varela, said, I heard at your meeting that you're having troubles with, um, well, not troubles, but you want to advance your IT and backups and, you know, antivirus and all that. And he said, you know, that he would be willing to help and consult with us. And that's just one small example of what's happening almost every single day here. And what I see is the town really just coming alive and coming together. And so another thing that I think is important is that Edgewood has been um, growing up over these past 20 years, so to speak. And um, we have to kind of seize our own responsibility in our own destiny. So uh, we're big enough now that we have tax revenue. Um, we have a lot of infrastructure. And so we really, I think, need to be standing up for Edgewood and we need to be promoting Edgewood as well. And we need to, in some cases, defend Edgewood. Um, there are some situations where uh, I think that you know, Edward doesn't even have a place at the table. And that's just a fact in the entities in the East Mountains. So networking is really important, but I think also taking on the responsibility of uh, Edgewood is an adult town now. <laughs> and this is ours and we need to bring it forward ourselves um, with the funding that that our taxpayers provide and um, making sure that we're keeping local control. So we're not gonna give up our powers to the state. We're not gonna give up our powers to the region. We're gonna, you know, like we need to take care of Edgewood and defend Edgewood to a certain extent while collaborating, of course, as we have been doing for all these years. And, um, and then as far as, you know, bringing in talent, I think there's just so many people that are, willing to help that it's it's pretty amazing so i think we have um we we have a new government i assume everyone knows we have a commission manager form of government instead of the mayor council and that is um by definition a more inclusive way to run the town um i do think we have some crazily oh crazily put together regulations and ordinances and as far as subdividing as far as zoning those kinds of things and i think we'll be scrutinizing that and coming up with intelligent forward-looking solutions to some of the problems that keep things from happening uh, we need lots more business we need lots more affordable housing we need um, more recreational opportunities. And I think we are really uniquely set up to be to act as a community and solve our problems intelligently and imaginatively in ways that will work sustainable for not I hate that word sustainable. <laughs> Santa Fe County made it almost 
<laughs> a bad word, but <clears throat> things that will thrive and, and be good for the town for many, many years. Okay. Um, so one of the questions that we had here that we wanted to make sure that we asked about was some of the simple stuff. So like, what's your favorite community event or events that go on in Edgewood? Anybody want to take that one? The events at Wildlife West. I love Wildlife West. They're having a big, huge, I don't know if it's Celtic or Celtic festival um, next weekend. And so we're looking forward to that. The music festivals, I always love to go to their chuck wagon dinners. Um, you see people dancing and eating and it's just a great community event. So I think um, chuck wagon dinners at Wildlife West is one of my favorites. A Wildlife West is a local um, nature park that rescues um, native New Mexico native type animals. They're animals that have been um, taken in for whatever reason that can't be returned to the wild um, that need to live in captivity forever. Um, it's a nonprofit. It's what one point, I think it's like a little over an acre to walk. Um, you can get a membership and come walk every day, spend the day there. There's just lots of um, lots of great things to do at Wildlife West. I love the events at Wildlife West. Also, um, the kite festival is really neat to see all the kids out there with the kites and the wind. Yeah, <laughs> the wind in the East Mountains. Um, but I have to say my favorite is Run Rally Rock with a parade. I love parades. Parades to me really bring out the patriotism, you know, the way that the community is, it kind of brings people together. It's fun, it's exciting. Um, you get outside to do something different, um, get the kids together. And I think that parades are wonderful, so. I was gonna say that very same thing. <laughs> Pre-pandemic, we had Run, Rally and Rock every year in August and a parade. And Ray and I always carry the flags on our horses and it's just so much fun to wave to the kids and the kids want to come up and pet your horse and hopefully you have a good enough horse <laughs> that that works <clears throat> and um, but it's, it's always fun it's always a ball I hope we can do that again I really do um well I am a little bit partial uh because I work at the library I really enjoy our different seasonal or holiday themed events like the pumpkin carving we usually get about a hundred pumpkins and about as many people carving them. And there are pumpkin guts all over the place and seeds at the end of the day. We just love it. And, um, you know, even though the library events are, are on a much smaller scale, we're able to do much more throughout the year. And it just really brings everyone together. And I always hear the kids say, thank you. Thank you for doing this. And I want to say thank you because you're the one that funds these events. So I'm glad that people are taking part and taking pride in their local library and some of the events. So that those are probably my favorite and the water fun days. Um, those are super duper messy too. The mud pit. I love it. I just remember one little girl. I will always remember her name. Her name is June. She did would refuse to wash the mud off before she got on the slide. So you could always see a huge brown streak coming down the slide. And um, she just, she was hilarious. Anyway, here you go, Mike, sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, you'll have to remind me the proper name. Bruce Brots and on Bachelor oh, or Bruce on Bachelor. We ought to put Brots in there, right? <laughs> um, that's always a fun event, I think. Um, what a couple of years ago we burned uh, the howling coyote in effigy uh, like Zozobra. Anyway, the, the one I like is one that's been going on for quite some time is the Father's Day car show um, that started at Valley View uh, at the Christian Church across the street from, from the um, library and town hall. Um, outgrew, and then I think Tony took it over. Um, 
and um, they're doing it at the Walmart parking lot now. I don't know if they did the last or two years ago. Did they? Okay. Um, but what a hoot, you know, and, and you pray that it's not windy because it's usually what in April, um, June, but, or <laughs> June, <laughs> Father's Day. I always think windiest month of the year, April, right? Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, and I think it's been growing every single year. And I mean, you see so many people from the community and it's a really neat opportunity to see other folks coming from, I've seen folks come from Texas uh, to that car show. Uh, certainly folks from, from Albuquerque will come from the, uh, for the car show with their cars and uh, really enjoy that. So I, we put on a good face for that, especially for the visitors. Thank you. Um, did Rakan, did we have anybody that wanted to weigh in in line online? Okay, just wanted to make sure. Martha, you wanted to say something else? Yes. One of the really big events, and this is all brand new for Edgewood, was the rodeo the um, East Mountain Cowboy Church put on. And they're going to be doing a series of them all summer. But there were people, lots of people from Albuquerque, and they were amazed at what a, a neat place we have out here. I mean, a lot of people in Albuquerque have no idea what the green side really looks like. <laughs> And the kids are, oh yeah. And it's uh we've it, it's a really good resource. It's gonna make it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'll mention uh, a couple others that I hadn't heard come up yet. So we've got the outdoor movies that happen in the summer, they're usually pretty popular. Um we've also got the Celtic Fest that occurs in the fall, which draws a lot of people. So the Highlander games, those heavy athletics are done here on our field, which is really unusual. And it's fun to come out and watch and, and so forth. And, um, and I think I've heard rumor anyway, that Wolfstock might be coming back this, this fall as well. And Wolfstock is a community event where everybody brings their dogs and they come out and they have agility courses and they have different kinds of training and, and the community just loves it because Edgewood is filled with animal lovers. We've got, whether they're the furry four-legged kind that live in your house or the kind that live in the barn, we just have a lot of animals out here. It's part of, part of the way that um, we live. And one of the things most people enjoy about this community is the ability to, to have livestock and, and uh, horses and goats and things like that, chickens. Um, I'm fortunate I get to watch my neighbor's horses. So it's all the fun without the work. <laughs> um okay so one of the go ahead did you yeah, I, was one, um, I was just wondering really quick are there uh events that we should be doing um yeah i i know we've got our usual events and i'm wondering uh we're mentioning all these events but uh you know we've got a ton of people that moved in in the last two to three years and they're not aware of these regular annual events Perhaps uh, there may be some worth into looking into, um, like you said, networking to try to get the word out again, try to get some of the events going again. Did Were there events that you wanted to see that we don't have? Yeah, so Sherry just mentioned my top one, which is more on the 4th of July. With fireworks, parade, like just bringing the community together for 4th of July. Um, I heard from someone in my neighborhood about attracting the uh, uh, dog show people that go around it because he said that it's just a perfect place for them and we have the hotel. So I always thought that would be neat for them to be able to, you know, use the field and, and do that. And I know that's different. It's kind of like a club or whatever, not really a town event, but that came to mind. Um, and then also, I think that with EVCA being right here in Edgewood, um, we need to do some more celebration of our high school students and, and or any of and all of the students, but just the high schoolers that are here in Edgewood's high school. Um, we need to celebrate them and do something more with EVCA. Um. I know, Andrea, I think you guys had some stargazing events or something like that. I, th I think those um, are always fun. Um, 
you know, just anything to get people outdoors and, and together and doing things, taking advantage of, of just what is outside, I think is really wonderful. So um, I would like to see like some kind of arts in the parks or something like that. I've always thought um, I would love to see like us get together and do a big glow stick um, art thing out on the park or something. I don't know, something just like really out there um, that nobody else is doing. So um, just, you know, adventurous ideas. Oh, okay. Well, that's my great idea. I'm claiming it. <laughs> oh, so there was one other thing I was going to mention. Let me see if I can go through my list and figure out what it was. Um, Got a soft track a little. No, that's okay. <laughs> oh, oh the, the one, there's one event in town that always warms my heart every year, and that's the community Thanksgiving. And Chili Hills organizes it, but a lot of our local businesses, they fund it. And it's wonderful because it's free to anybody that comes and many years I've gone to volunteer and serve and I talk to the people that come and oftentimes they are people that are traveling I-40 and they, they just happen to pull off because they see lights, they see cars in the parking lot, they assume the restaurant's open and I... I'm not even going to tell you the stories because they'll make me cry of people that have stopped in Edgewood unexpectedly, but it happens to be Thanksgiving. And it's just meant the world to them to that this little tiny town opens the door, says, come on in, sit down, join us, have Thanksgiving. And they leave without having to pay because it's already been covered by the community. So um, that's just kind of a fun, I think it's one of those things that Edgewood really can be proud of, of the kind of town that we are, that we do um, open our arms and invite people to come and participate in what we have to offer. So it sounds like we do have a lot going on. It just was on pause for a while. Rakan, did somebody want to weigh in online? Yay! <laughs> okay, so um, this person on, on the chat is so enamored with the love and pride you all have for your community and the amazing things that you have going on. And they wonder if maybe, um, did you ever consider reaching out to a community outside of Edgewood, like a sister community somewhere, somewhere in the world? I don't know. And sharing your, your wonderful pride with them. Did anybody here want to answer that? Yeah, let me pass that down. I think we did have a sister. It's yeah, it's vaguely familiar to me, but of course, it's probably was long ago. That's something we could check into. Good idea. <laughs> I don't know. That's a really interesting observation, though. It really is. And thank you, whoever that was from. Um, that I think that is part of the reason that we all do choose to live in a small town is for those connections and that we do get to know each other and um, and so forth. So, um, okay. So one of these other questions on here, what do you appreciate about Edgewood's way of life or the community? And, and just what is it that you appreciate most about it here? And why is that important to you? Too? The skies are just amazing. I can sit and just look at the skies day and night. <laughs> they are always beautiful. They are always fascinating. Um, they are always exhilarating. You can just feel, <clears throat> they just make you feel so good about being here. One of the things I appreciated most when I was working in Albuquerque and living out here was the unwinding drive time. Um, by the time I would leave work and drive through the crazy track of traffic of Edgewood, I mean of Albuquerque, and then I would get on I-40 at Tramway. And sometimes the moon coming through the canyon is just amazing. It looks like you're just driving right into it. Um, but by the time I got home, I had left everything behind. And so I think it's the drive time. Um, 
and the hmm? yeah yeah so i agree with that for sure um i put on my list to the commute um because like it's been mentioned we're kind of country living but yet close enough that it's 25 minutes or so um to be in albuquerque and an hour to be in santa fe so professionally that works for me because i have to audit a lot of governments in santa fe so that's that's good um but that time back and forth is is nice like you said to decompress and think about things or listen to um, like books on tape, whatever type of stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's great. And we're not in stop and go traffic headed into Rio Rancho. I mean, I've done that before and it was an hour of misery and we don't have that. It's just pretty much most of the time straight. I like that we have four seasons. I really do love that. Um, I have observed we're losing our night skies. Yeah. I've observed that. That's good. Um, so we might want to think about what to do about that. Um, safety. I love that we can feel safe most of the time. Yeah. And that we have strong Christian groups here, strong churches. And of course, I love the atmosphere of um, being able to ride horses. So. Yeah. <laughs> here you go, sir. One word quiet yeah. uh, besides unwinding coming in from town when when i was working in albuquerque um coming through the canyon and i would get home and over the weekend my wife says well we need to go down to home depot or builder square wherever and pick up some no i don't want i don't want to leave you know until i have to because it was just so relaxing and so quiet, except for the neighbor's rooster now and again, but that's part of the charm of living in Edgewood, isn't it? So. Hi, Hello. new person, yay. Hi, I'm obviously mentioned I was invited off Facebook. Awesome, yeah. great. My, 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 my pleasure too. I'm Linda, I'm Martha, Hi. Sherry, and Audrey. Hello. Do you live here in Edgewood? I live in Dr. Okay. Okay. So one of our neighbors. Yes, Very sir. cool. Okay. Nice it's nice to meet you. So what we're kind of just talking about is some visioning for our community, what we see now, what we might like to see in the future and so forth. So um, I guess I'll just ask you if you're familiar with this area, right? So what is it that you enjoy about being out here? One of the biggest things for me that I enjoy, especially being Southern part of this community is my ability to be independent able to live on my own and, and have my privacy, but at the same time, getting to enjoy my neighbor's real homey community and having access to resources on a more independent level than maybe our urban counterparts. Thank you. That's great. And one of the other questions that we had asked was uh, favorite community events. Do you have any favorite community events you wanna tell us about? I have quite a lot. So I was born and raised out in Estancia. Um, so track and cross country was one of my favorite things. Bean Valley um, tournaments and things like that were my, one of my favorites in unison with the mile long um, yard sale that we have every year down in Estancia, as well as our pumpkin chunkin. So that's just to list a few, but thank you. And pumpkin chunkin, for those of you that don't know, it's done in Estancia, which is about 30 minutes away. Um, they literally hurl pumpkins through the air in any way they possibly can. They have air cannons that they shoot them out of. They'll go like a mile. They have um, manual launches where you can have uh, like a seesaw or teeter-totter type of device and have your kids jump on one end and launch a pumpkin. You can. They also have a trebuchet, which is uh, kind of medieval times pumpkin launching where it's kind of flips through the air and launches it. It's really a very cool thing. And everybody goes out and tailgates and sits on the tail of their pickup truck and watches these pumpkins fly through the air. And it honestly makes that as it's going by. So it's a lot of fun. And then everyone cheers when they smash on the ground and you watch the judges run out and mark where they landed. It's kind of like a shot put with a balloon. <laughs> I mean, with a pumpkin. And the, the, the tires. <laughs> The distance, the distance and the accuracy. Yeah. 
So, so, you know, small towns, we come up with these funny little events sometimes that turn into be really tradition and, and pumpkin chunkin is one of those things. Um, it's a huge tradition. Uh, that leads me to the very next question. Are there any traditions that we have here locally that we think are important to keep or to hold on to or to bring back if they've been lost through the years or any new traditions we think are worth starting? Well, I think um, I really like to see wolf stock coming back. That's something that, um, you know, I really enjoy. My dog used to come to love to come to wolf stock and visit and play all the little doggy games. And it was always real hard not to walk away with a new friend from him for him. So traditions, um, I think Run Rally Rock and Wildlife West things. Um, as far as starting, I definitely think we need some traditions um, with uh, EVCA. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Thank you for running. Oh, sure. Yeah, no problem. So this is Commissioner Brennan and his wife, Debbie. Oh, you have a, a mic. So, <laughs> right. Is it working okay? It's live. Okay. So um, you want to repeat the question? The question was any traditions, sorry. Are there any traditions that we have in our community that we think we really want to keep, make sure that we hold on to or bring back if they've been lost through the years or any new traditions that we think maybe should be started? So I'll let you guys call in on that. Well, um, you can hear me on this? Yeah, there we go. Since we've, since we've been here, it's a, the, the car show that they've been having every year. That is, I mean, I've, we've watched it turn in, start from just a handful of cars and taking up, now taking up half a Walmart's parking lot. And it seems like there's no stop to it growing. We mm -hmm. may eventually outgrow Walmart's parking <laughs> lot, <laughs> but that's a good, that's a good thing. And uh, I mean, I've, I've been over there and I've ran into so many people from other places outside of New Mexico that are, they come here for that. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's fantastic. And I, I, I love it. It's a great, it's a great opportunity for the entire community um, and for the little businesses in this town, because it brings, brings traffic in. Uh, last year I ran into a couple, they didn't even know Edgewood existed, but they heard about this and they came in. This is a nice little town. So yeah, that's uh, for me. That's been, that's okay. always been a big one. And um, last year was the first year that I went to the uh, Brews on the Bachelor. Mm -hmm. um, that was fully enjoyable. And uh, once again, lots of people there, not just from Edgewood. And then we had we had the Celtic um, Festival. Mm -hmm. That last year again. That was my first year for attending that. And. Uh, I've been, you know, sitting, you know, kicking myself. Said, man, I've been missing a lot of good stuff over the years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brews on Bachelor for I, I, that's come up a couple times, so I'm going to explain what that means. Bachelor Draw is a natural geographic landmark feature here, so it's kind of an arroyo, and the location of that event is a long Bachelor Draw. So it's not about we're not auctioning people off. We're not doing anything weird. Uh, it's just a ge geographic marker of where that event is held. Which is actually the name of one of the old families. Right. Oh, and I just got told it's the name of one of our founding families back here in the community. I did not know that. Debbie, did you have anything you wanted to add on that? I know. I do know after going to the car show, talking to a lot of people, it's actually one of the most popular in the nation. So we have an awful lot of folks that come all over the country to this one because it's such a good show, which I was very surprised to hear that. I thought it was just something local, but it's actually a nationwide thing. They do. They come from all our all surrounding over. states. It's yes. one of the largest shows in the state of New Mexico. It's really wonderful. I would like to see, I love all the things we have going, Bruise on the Bachelor, I like the Celtic festival that we have, the kite festival that we have over at Wild West. I'd like us to see some, do something, a parade, a picnic, something fun on the 4th of July. 
to okay. celebrate that. I just, it's sort of weird to be in a small town and nothing happens because we've always been in small towns and it's always been a huge, huge thing. Yeah. And we don't have that here. Well, we, we've, I think in the past out of courtesy to our neighbor town, Moriarty, who's always held a big parade, we don't do anything in the morning. People go over there. Right. But in the afternoon, our local arts alliance, Route 66 Arts Alliance, has traditionally held an arts fair, an arts festival. I think it's called uh, Arts at the Park or okay. Field of Field of Arts. That's Field what it is. And um, we've talked about, I've talked with the Arts Alliance about expand. what can we do to expand on these things and, and maybe make things that are a little bit more Edgewood oriented for because we've gotten so much bigger. Back yeah. in the day, we were a tiny... We're still a small town, but back in the day when we only had 1,800 people here, it was a different story. Now we have almost 6,200 people and it feels huge. <laughs> so. uh, just, just real quick on the small town thing. I was just doing some research um, on Santa Fe County and looking at all the population. Do you realize we are the second biggest town in Santa Fe County? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Reba. It's in part. The uh, just a small. Town. I can't pronounce the name of the town, but the next one to us has five thousand. Um, but we're steadily growing. We are the second biggest town in Santa Fe County, and I think that's something to be proud of. Yeah. <laughs> they should listen to us definitely you know there's another event perhaps that would become a tradition that i would like to see and that's a, a live music event um and i am partial to acoustic you can go into town or go to any bar and yeah they're playing hard rock they're playing jazz I would like to see some folk music, some bluegrass, maybe in conjunction with 4th of July, or maybe something that would stand out on its own. There's surprisingly um, a pretty good bluegrass um, population in the state of New Mexico, especially around Albuquerque. There's a group called Southwest, well, Southwest Pickers is the nickname. It's some long name I don't recall that they have a, an event in, in the city, in Santa Fe, um, in the springtime. Anyway, I always thought that that would be something nice to do, um, you know, maybe on one of our three-day weekend holidays or or uh, uh, Fourth of July. And no, I'm not going to bring out my banjo. <laughs> <laughs> I think another real important thing, especially for young people in our community, would to be, would B to B, <laughs> bring job fairs around the area, make that a consistent thing just so we could see what opportunities are available. Um, so I'm from the southern part of Torrance County. I'm from over in Tajique between um, Chilili and Manzano. So that's me. Uh, and out there, I feel like a lot of opportunity is kept online where we don't have good broadband internet service. And I think that bringing job fairs up here to Edgewood, because you guys are the hub where we get our groceries. So, you know, bringing job fairs, opening up the availability, letting us know that this is like a custom so we can come here and, and find jobs. Great idea. Great idea. Um, and we used to have a bluegrass festival here in Edgewood at Wildlife West, actually. Yeah, for a lot of years. Um, I don't know the history of why it stopped but uh, we did have that and it's such a great venue at wildlife west because there's that covered amphitheater and lots of space and so forth so maybe that's something we need to look into um a few years ago pre-covid the chamber had run uh during cowboy days we ran music and bruise nights a couple of them and they were well attended and a lot of fun so that's a good idea we probably do need to bring something like that back well Cowboy days with SAS moving out of state. The, we won't have end of trail here anymore, which was the world championship of cowboy action shooting. It's now going to be in Arizona. So um, sadly, we don't have that available. So, but that doesn't mean we can't do cowboy days in one form or another because we certainly have a lot of people here that are living that lifestyle. Right. We could do it. Okay, so let's, I want to double check where we are time-wise. Oh, okay. Um, 
Okay, so our next question is, how can we as a community, as a group of people, how can we influence positive change in the community? How can we get people involved? How can we um, just create the community that we really want this to be, even though we've already said we love what it is, but there's also things we've brought up that we'd like to see here. So how do we make those things happen? How do we get community members informed, involved, active in making those changes? I know there's a saying that says, be the change you want to see. So volunteer for the advisory boards. If there's not an advisory board, volunteer to create one. You know, um, if you want to see something, sometimes it's you who has to create it. And so that would be my thought. You know, next door is a great social, um, local social, I mean, you know, neighborhood community um, social thing. You can reach out and, and, you know, grab other people's attention, people who are looking to see the things that you want to see and create that group and move it forward, I think is the best way that I've seen change happen. Yeah, I think there's always going to be a small group of people in each area that makes it happen, that's committed to it and passionate about it. And then from there, it's, you know, getting the word out and letting people know about it and reminding them. So communication is key, whether that be social media or otherwise. Um, and I think uh, getting connected to organizations better um, like the churches to put the word out um, the chamber of course plays a key role in all of this um, in in getting the word out and people just need a lot of reminders that's what I see I mean because they might read about it or see something you know and then three days later they're doing 27 things with their children and they forget so um, yeah, that's, that's what I think is just having those core group of people that are passionate about it to make it happen. And then the communication to actually get people to attend. So, yeah. I think, um, I've always felt like the business community and the schools should interact far more than they do. Um, People, the kids need to understand what it's like to be entrepreneurial and why it's important for this country. And they don't do that when all they have is the academic side of things. So if the businesses had a forum where they could, well, we used to do that at Run, Rally and Rock. We have a, a business expo. <clears throat> and you would get to meet people who had home-based businesses that you didn't even know existed. Or you could, you know, there's an awful lot of inter intercommunication. And then the kids would come around and, and everybody would have a free gift or something. And then there was always free hot dogs. And so it was a great community event that brought the businesses together with the community more. And I think we need a lot more of that. But we do have a commission that is very open to lots of new ideas and, and really wants to see the community come together. We're gonna to have town halls, which is a, a great way to start communicating and having ideas and um, have, having people share what they think. But um, hopefully we'll do lots of that. <laughs> I'm gonna um, ask Commissioner Brennan to weigh in on this one because you have very effectively used social media to ask the community questions and gotten an earful in return. <laughs> Sometimes more than I, than I thought. Um, yep, you, using the social media and Getting the getting the question out, and you got to make sure the question that you word is going to have the right terminology and to spark that interest for replies. Of course, and all, and the one thing we got to remember is all the replies you get are not necessarily going to be the replies you want, but you even want to hear those as well because that's that balances things out, and you can get a feel of where everything's falling into place. Um, I'm. You know, it, I'm not a big social media type person, <laughs> but <laughs> um, learning more and more how to how to properly use that, um, which I think is pretty good for an old person. <laughs> 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 but
But um, the other thing too, and I was thinking when you're, you're mentioning about uh, the kids and stuff like that, I've always been told if you ever want to get adults to do something, you get the kids excited about it. And the kids start repeating it over and over, mommy, daddy, this, that, and the other. And eventually, okay, let's go. And I, and I think back when I was a kid, uh, of course, we didn't have social media back then, but still we would find out something's going on and said, we want to go do this. We want to go see this. And it's, you know, it's, you know, boils down to advertising, but you know, the kids are the ones and, and they listen. A lot of people may th think that kids don't listen, but they do listen. And you just got to make sure once again, when you're looking to get them to listen, just using the right words that they're going to pick up on. And once they get excited, then they get their parents going and the parents, well, yeah, let's go. Well, let's see if uh, Tom and Julie, they want to go take, get their kids. We all go together and it starts building up. Um, and a good way to start doing that is to work with the schools when there are certain activities going on that are definitely going to be um, family oriented and, you know, kid, kid centric that you, you get it into the schools and you get the schools to go ahead and bring it up. Um, you know, the beginning of the day or the class, uh, you know, I, it's been a long time since I've been in a regular classroom. I remember when I was a kid, they would get on the loudspeaker and they would tell us about things that were going on. And first thing in the morning, we would do that. We would say our morning prayer and then we'd say the Pledge of Allegiance. And then we got to work. <laughs> um, a lot of that I know is not what they do anymore, which is kind of sad. But still, we can if we can get the schools to work with us on that and get those children excited, that gets the parents excited. Um, it'll increase a lot of participation. I think that's really true because kids' brains are not cluttered with all the minutia that adult brains are filled with. And so they do hone in on those key things that sound like fun that they can um, pester their parents with, you know, and, and we as adults constantly busy need those reminders, I guess, <laughs> the endless <laughs> reminders. I can remember my daughter in the back seat of the car talking to the back of my head endlessly until I would just acknowledge, okay, we're going to do it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, anybody over here? Is there anybody online that had some comments to add? Uh, there's no questions online, but I had a, a comment. Okay. Um, we actually talked about it yesterday in our meeting in our, our last minute preparations. And I'm it's not my place to offer this, but I'm going to offer the League of Women Voters of Santa Fe County. <laughs> I suggested a candidate forum, but maybe a town hall mm -hmm. for statewide and county officials. Mm -hmm. Elections are won and lost on a you know, few votes. 6,000 is a lot when it comes to that. Well, and to have candidates take the time to come down to Edgewood would be nice um, to hear from them so that they are speaking to various parts of their district or their county. Um, you know, because there are a lot of people down here in Edgewood and we do tend to be a pretty active bunch <laughs> and um, getting our voices heard up in Santa Fe. Now that I know we're number two in population in the county should be a high priority. So, um, so yeah, I think that would be a lovely way to, to approach it perhaps is, is to do a forum as opposed to a, a candidate's forum, just do an open dialogue and go ahead. I'd like to just piggyback quickly on what Rakan said. When Rakan made that offer, you're looking at the people who will do it. So we're not just saying, oh, the League of Women Voters might come down here and do a candidate forum. This is our second trip. We've been working with your Chamber of Commerce, your paper, and with the public library, which is very close to my heart. Um, we're getting to know you a little bit. 6,200 people, we just heard from, and I'm sorry, I need your name again. Augustine. 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 Augustine, who has visited you from near Estancia. Um, so you're kind of famous in the Eastern Mountain region. And I know that from Linda, you have clout and you are articulate and you know how to converse and you know how to get things done. So my goodness me, yes, I hope that you leverage the assets that you have and 
the league is a good force in New Mexico. We're a very good nonpartisan political force and we're with you. We are definitely with you, Edgewood. It's gone on way too long that you've been neglected. Yeah, so, and I, I had one other, could I ask one other question? Augustan, I'd love to know what motivated you to come all this way to this meeting. So for me, it's a couple of different things. Um, I think engagement with any process that's driven for a positive change is one of the most important things, uh, especially in, in being aware of what's going on. Because I actually worked in Santa Fe this past session. Um, I was the committee assistant over house energy, environment, and natural resources. And so it pushed me. You know, I've, I'm familiar with the League of Women Voters, and I commend you for your hard work throughout the state. Uh, and I also know the town of Edgewood. Uh, I was born and raised here. I've spent 22 years of my life here. And, and I think it's important that we get perspective because like they said, Edward does bring clout. Um, for the majority of my county, we come up here because it's a closer alternative than Albuquerque. And so, you know, taking the time to really converse and bring together the perspective and full fruition of what it means to be that hub in this community, especially in a community that is so food scarce. That's another part of it. I could go on and on. There are endless reasons why, but you know, thank you so much and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to point out that the 6,200, according to the census, is only within the incorporated area of Edgewood. And that's only within the municipal boundaries. That's even a very small portion of what I would consider Edgewood and this side of the East Mountains. Um, and so it's probably, what do you think guys, at least double that, at least double. So 15, we have three counties. 87015 is our zip code and it's about 15,000 people. 15,000 is what Martha is saying. Um, in 87015. So this is quite a few. Um, in contrast, um, I think the census for Moriarty is around 1500. So many, many, many times over. Uh, um, some of the research I was doing also was looking at the East Mountain area in general. And if we include everything going all the way up to the uh, Sandia Park and all the way, you know, as far as the residential area goes, it's close to 35,000 people on this side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. It's actually about even closer to 40, actually. And oftentimes when I'm doing, um, because part of my job for the chamber is representing the business community, I'll do radio shows. Um, and so one of the things I'm, they're always blown away in Albuquerque. When I tell them we have 40,000 people out here on this side of the mountain, and most of them have never come to this side of the mountain. And so it's really, it's interesting. And it is a very different kind of economy here because it is made up so much of small businesses, mom and pop kind of places. Yes, we do have some of the bigger chains here in Edgewood, but we still have a lot of mom and pop shops. We still have a lot in the surrounding area and many, many, many home based businesses that people don't even realize are here of all different kinds. So. It actually is quite a large bunch of people living here and population wise that I'm really hopeful that politicians will start to take note of the fact that we're here. And uh, I think it's important to recognize that all the people that are here because we do interact heavily with Albuquerque and as well with Santa Fe, um, but we're our own little world too at the same time. And we've got I-40. So we are the Southern gateway to Santa Fe County right here in Edgewood. And we're also about halfway across the state. So we're truly the heart of New Mexico, <laughs> if you want to get that way. <laughs> okay, so um, is there anything that we've kind of overlooked today? I mean, we, we have some commonalities here, don't we, Andrea? Right, okay. <laughs> you scared me. I thought we had five minutes. <laughs> It's like, I, I talk fast, but not that fast. Um, did, did you, okay. Thank you for the mic, Mike. Um, so I am, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, Augustine. Um, I am very excited to see you. I think that's one thing that Edgewood has been missing out. 
younger people getting involved. We need to make a point to reach out to younger people and ask for them to involve themselves and make it easy for younger people and people with families to get involved. I know people are, you're trying to work, you're trying to get by, you're trying to go to school, you're trying to do all those things. But I think there is tremendous value in trying to reach out to that younger um, generation because they will be the future generation of Edgewood. And so um, I, I'm a little bit partial to you. <laughs> um, and I'm very happy to see you. And I hope that in the future, Edgewood will make an effort to even reach out to school age children and get them involved as well. When people take ownership of their community, that can be very powerful. And um, I'm, I'm excited for that kind of potential in our young families and our young children and our young adults. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, did anybody else want to weigh in? I'm going to piggyback after you. Go ahead. Okay. I think that's a wonderful idea that Andrea has. You know, I recall somebody telling me East Mountain High School has a very good civics program. We, the, you were there? Okay. Okay. I heard they had a very good civics program. Why couldn't we invite maybe some of their student council or those kids that are in that class? You know, their high school, it'll give them a feel for this. If it's something they want to go to as a career, it gives them a little bit more of a step up. Plus, we'll get them involved in the town. That was my thought. Um, I want to, what Andrea was saying, um, it's nice to have folks like Augustine's age and generation. Um, and I, I was thinking, okay, how do we keep them here once they graduate school? And my thought is always, well, okay, affordable housing and jobs. But then I'm thinking after listening to what people are saying, you know what? At a younger age, if they're involved with the community, they have that pride where they don't want to leave, where they'll stick around and maybe do it and um, uh, get involved with 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 um, you know real estate or or making their own business that sort of thing. So it's more than just jobs and 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 housing, and there's a there's a certain amount of pride where they don't want to leave. And also, because uh, back to the commissioner and your wife, if you guys need help connecting with East Mountain, I'm willing to help with that. Um, I know a couple of people who went through their um, youth and government program. So feel free to reach out. I'll get you guys my information. Um, and also to piggyback off this, you know, as a younger person, I'm 22. So I just graduated from UNM as well. Um, thank you. I'm a first generation low income college student. And so going through that process was something that was difficult enough. Um, but I also went to the University of Alabama where I ran cross country and track. So that's how I sent myself to college. And I think that that's a great point that you bring up as well, you know, giving them that opportunity, but also bringing a sense of entertainment and, and nuance to it. So maybe giving young people a means of forward mobility in organizations here so they can make decisions for other young people. You know, maybe an advisory board of young people to advise on events or to advise on your social media, because this is the generation of social media. It's crazy to see. Uh, you know, I didn't have a computer till I was like 12. So, <laughs> but those things, you know, those are the inputs I have as a young person. And uh, I'll make sure to keep my eyes open for events and bring young people to these things. Because politicians, even in politics, being involved in that aspect needs to be bipartisan. And it needs to be done in a way that's for the community. It's public service, not my service. So, but yeah, I seen you wanted to go. Well, there are a couple things, you know, I've been advocating forever for a young people governmental advisory group. <laughs> um, but the other thing, too, is maybe some kind of internship programs and stuff like that. You know, one of our sergeants is, I'm happy to say, is a local young man who graduated, I believe, from Moriarty High School or one of the local high schools. He came to us, we sent him through the police academy. And, you know, I think that 
helps create loyalty, you know, um, he's able to pursue the career he loves in the community that he grew up in. And I think that's very important. I think, you know, if we could do that more with teachers and firemen and, and especially all the service fields, it's so hard to find people to, to do those jobs. But I think if we could, you know, work out some sort of internship or, or mentorship even, or something like that, I think that would be really helpful too. Yeah. Trades. Mm-hmm. I have been talking to Parks and Rec about doing a mayor's youth council or advisory board. And I know that's something that you've wanted. So it's something that we will put into place um, soon. We have other fires right now, but um, definitely, yeah. So um, just get, get me your information and, and we'll be in touch when the time comes. Um, we, I've always been very passionate about um, being on, involved in the PTOs. And that's kind of what got me started into public service was serving in this school, Edgewood Elementary, on the PTO for my kids. Um, and then school closure issue came up and that's where I kind of, you know, got involved from there and spent eight years on the school board. So I'm very passionate about youth programs. And right now we need to get the YES program up and running for June and July. So um, that's a high priority. But with that, when there is capacity, I want to get the, the Mayor's Youth Council Advisory, um, Youth Advisory Council, sorry, uh, up and running so that, you know, we can have that, that voice. And as well, I will point out that we do have a commissioner who's um, probably in between yours and my age. So that's a good thing, right? <laughs> that's great. Um, so he has young children and I think that's a great representative for the people. Um, and he will have that perspective and that's Commissioner Donner, Sterling Donner. And um, let's see, what else was I gonna mention? Let's not forget about EVCA. So student council, um, definitely pulling from, you know, Moriarty and, and um, East Mountain High. It's where my daughter went the last two years. Um, but definitely right here in the heart of Edgewood, we have a school that um, is, is very big on the Constitution, on government, on freedom, on people's rights. They are so strong that they memorize, you know, sections um, of things from the Founding Fathers, um, they give speeches. They are they are very very active in, um, I guess you could say in uh, the world of government in a way. So that's kind of their core values, and not having too big of government, but very very close to the founding principles of our country, which here in Edgewood we tend to be freedom loving people, and definitely connected to that to those roots and so um keeping them involved and doing more with them i think is is really key and and they're all you know they're from here so they're going to be um great i think um intelligent we have so much so you know much intelligence and talents and experience um that uh, we really could connect them in and, and um, help them grow in that way too, to be thinking of being community-minded. And a lot of it has to do with volunteering. Um, I work on the audit of Eastern New Mexico University. And I remember that they were gonna have a student, uh, they do have a student member, but this student member, or, or perhaps it was the administration, I don't know, was really worried about that they should get paid or they should be rewarded in some way. And, you know, there's pros and cons to that, but I always think, you know, it's about public service. It's about serving the community, you know? Um, and so, you know, not always having to receive something in return for what you do, I think is important. Um, the commissioners, we are seeing you know, the hours that we put in and everything that we do and the revenue that we give up from our businesses or our work, I mean, we go negative. We don't just stay at zero. <laughs> we actually go negative. Um, but that's an investment. Um, and you have to think long term. 
and what you're investing into your community, to the families, into the future with the children. And so your blood, sweat and tears and time and money and all of that um, is a sacrifice. And we have to, I think, teach the next generation that too. Yeah, when we were talking about, you know, getting the kids involved and stuff like that, different activities. And one thing that came to my mind is something that's dear and close to Sherry's heart is that BMX track that we keep on talking about. BMX tracks are for kids. And if we move. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't think my knees would put up for that. <laughs> but I mean, well, what, what I'm getting at, though, is when we start, if when the time comes, we can start moving forward. And that is to get the kids that are involved with it out here, part of the planning program get them involved. When you get them involved, they're going to get excited and their friends are going to get excited. Once again, it's going to, it's going to snowball itself. And then once we have it built, the kids are going to, I did that. And that, that encourages others to do it. And it's just, it'll get that momentum going. And of course, once we have it there, then we have more people coming in and that's going to add up to more different things that we can start doing. And who knows, maybe we can start having an annual BMX festival where everybody comes out here with their bikes and start drawing kids from all over the state. And who knows, maybe even further. So it's, I mean, all the, all this stuff ties into each other. People say, well, what the heck does like BMX bikes have to do with antique cars? Well, people who build antique cars have kids kids are into stuff like BMX bikes. I mean, it, it all ties in together. Um, and that's part of being the community. I think that, um, I think we're really onto something, paying attention to all the different generations that are here and, and inviting people um, of all ages to get involved. I know that a lot of us that are here have been involved in the community for many, many, many years. I don't know about you guys, but I, for one, am really excited to have a younger generation come up and get involved and, and kind of take the torch and go forward with it. Um, with the chamber, I jokingly have said, Edgewood is a collection of businesses in search of a town. And it's because we don't really have that traditional downtown here. Um, even though we have Route 66 going right through our community, it seems like the obvious place. Certain infrastructures and developments have not been done there that need to be to create that downtown feeling. But we also, as a young community, don't have a uh, central location, which Section 16 had always intended to be or was talked about to be that um, heart of the community, not the, the retail part, but just where activities took place. Edgewood Elementary has long been one of the places that uh, community events were held at. The park over here, Venus Park, is very busy year round with different things that go on. And I think that if there's something that as a community that we can really push for, it's creating those venues, those central locations that encourage people to come together, that give us a place that we can say, this is our, you know, in Santa Fe, there's the plaza, right? In Edgewood, we have, right? <laughs> you know, so um, everyone calls it the soccer field um, because that's what's obvious about it. Um, but we also know living here in the windy Southwest that we live in, um, that soccer field can get pretty windy. And so certain events just don't lend themselves to being held there. We need some sort of indoor venue that is near or adjacent to the public open spaces that we have that we can really build on all of these activities and events that go on in the community that draw people. I mean, these do stimulate our economy as well as being a social outlet for the community and for the nearby neighboring communities. Um, so I think that Edgewood's position as geographically the center of this region and um, population wise and retail wise, also the center of this region, we really have 
not only opportunity, but a certain level of responsibility to develop in, in ways that make sense that are good for Edgewood, that are also good for the surrounding communities. People that live in Santa Rosa, that's an hour and a half away, come here to shop at our Walmart because it's the closest one to them. And, and pardon me? Yeah, to come carry, right. I mean, people come a long distance to come to us. We're kind of that first retail sign of civilization that is available to a lot of people in Eastern New Mexico. Um, so I think I think Edgewood has a lot of opportunity. And, and like I said, a certain level of responsibility to, to um, take those things that we want to be, that we've talked about today and, and utilize them and preserve them. I did have one other question that we really didn't dwell on earlier that I thought I'd throw out to everybody as we kind of get closer to our, our wrapping up time. And that is, what is it as a community do we want to hold on to, to protect that we don't want to see changed about our community as we move forward, as we grow and so forth. So anybody wanna take that first? I think the rural feel. I like driving down and seeing cows. I like, um, you know, my 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 daughter was out here the other day, and she's like, it was so awesome. She's like, we were driving down three forty four, and the whole community was there. They were out chasing a cow that was on the road. There was the, the police department was there. All the, all the cars on the road stopped to help get this cow back where it was supposed to go. She's like, you do not find that everywhere. You know, um, I like hearing the roosters. I have a donkey down the road for me. Um, there are things that I never want to see go away in Edgewood. You know, um, I love that um, sound carries forever here. You can hear, you know, um, where I am, you hear the, well, you used to hear the um, Founders Ranch out there shooting. It's just an amazing, open feeling place that I hope never changes. Yeah, I love the openness and the family feel of it too. And um, the chief said something to me that the chief, our chief of police that just retired, um, he told me that when he came here, uh, that he was shocked that people were waving at him and being so kind to him. And people would start walking toward him and his you know, 30 years of law enforcement experience elsewhere yeah. to the West <laughs> and North a little, <laughs> um, you know, was that that person was about ready to confront him or say something bad or call him a name even. And, um, you know, but he said here, no, they were just coming up to express their thankfulness for his service. And um, another officer just told me this past week here at town hall that, um, it still freaks him out because he comes from Santa Fe County um, Sheriff's Office that when people wave at him, he thinks they're waving him down for a problem, <laughs> but, but they're not. They're just simply waving to be friendly. And so I don't want to lose that. I love the, um, you know, the niceness, the good heartedness, the neighborly feel of it. And um, also the community has taken a very strong corrupt, uh, stand against corruption um, and selfishness. And that is something that I do not want here. So if there's gonna be anyone with selfish motives, corrupt motives, illegal activities, um, don't come to Edgewood. That's what I have to say about that, so. One last thing, I have to step out. I have another engagement, um, but I just wanted to say, you know, I really appreciate that concept and what you guys are bringing here to Edgewood. It really, it's impactful and it is meaningful. I think it shows a big future for, for your guys' community. Uh, you know, as a kind of outsider neighbor guy, I'm looking and I, I, really, I really like what I'm seeing. Uh, additionally, I share some of those values too down there. I like my rural community. I like my animals. I like my chickens. I uh, raised chickens for a long time. And in starting a positivity channel, I think what 
on YouTube and on Facebook and bringing in members of our local community to engage in that. I think this is in that same vision of bringing that positive change to our community. So uh, I wanted to give you guys my information so you guys had it if you needed to get a hold of me. And I'll also give you my information, and then I'll be on my way. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Augustine, for joining us. Appreciate it. You, you changed the demographic curve significantly. <laughs> Mike, did you have anything you want to add to the concept of what to protect? Andrea, did, did you want to add to that? Okay. Well, uh, the one thing I will mention on what something we would love to preserve for our community, I think Edgewood's greatest landmark is South Mountain. It is what we're known for. It's on our town logo. It's how people identify that they are in Edgewood. And I would never want to see that ridge line lost. So I, I think that that's something that as a community, and that's kind of a zoning issue, but as a community that we should try to work toward protecting the beauty of our community, the natural beauty that's here. Um, if we're going to build something, let's try and enhance what's here and make it work within the community and so forth. Um, but South Mountain being our, our greatest well-known landmark and everyone jokingly says, why is it called South Mountain if it's north of the town? But everything used to be from the perspective of Santa Fe. And so it was the most Southern mountain <laughs> away from Santa Fe. Any other ideas you guys have on things we wanna make sure we preserve or protect or never lose about Edgewood? Well, I, I love that uh, Parks and Rec has been reactivated because we need to preserve our open space. It's, it's vital to the community. It means so much to all of us and everybody and the comprehensive plan comments always come back to that open space, trails, we really love that and we do want to preserve it. And as long as I've been here and as much as, as things have grown, there's still vast amounts of open space. I can ride my horse for hours and not see the same thing twice. And it's, I hope that never changes. When we moved back home, we both grew up in Albuquerque on the west side. So that was definitely a no, we're not moving there as much as I like the view of the mountain from that side. We looked at other small communities in and around the area because of our family and Edgewood was just the perfect fit. The openness, the ruralness. I've never had cows in my life. My uncle has a dairy, but it's nice. I had King got up one morning, he goes, you gotta come see this. And we had a herd of cattle going down the driveway. And it's like, well, we got to go get them and find out who they belong to. We've had sheep wandering around the property. We had a pig adopt us once. See, <laughs> I just love it. And I've talked to a lot of people. I've met a lot of folks that's moved into Edgewood from different areas. And I always ask, what made you come here? And it's always, it's quiet, mm -hmm. wide open, so beautiful scenery. And the people are so doggone nice. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I don't want that to go away. I lost my cat the other day and I was on next door, like within 10 minutes, I couldn't find her. I must've had eight or nine of my neighbors. Okay, I'm outside looking, I don't see anything. Which way do you think she went? And it was so nice. You know, she was found and she's grounded, but <laughs> it was so nice to have so many people jump in within 15 minutes of, okay, which way did she go? I don't want to lose that feeling. I want us to grow. And I know we need infrastructure and I know we need businesses, but I want to keep that balance where we stay a small town feeling. And that's my thought. It's good. I was thinking, um, as Linda was talking about South Mountain, um, that Edgewood's moving into its identity in a way. So we know how our teenagers grow into adulthood and they get a lot from their parents, but eventually they have to become independent on their own and they have to have their own identity. I think this is where Edgewood has, you know, parents sort of to, of Santa Fe and Albuquerque because they call it the East Mountains. Well, for us, it's not the East Mountains, it's the West Mountain and the North Mountain. Okay, so why are we identified by, you know, so we should just stop calling it that and call it what it is, the San Pedro Mountain, right? 
in the Sandia Mountains um, and just start that culture change now um, for the future. That's what I think. But it also just, again, um, taking on our identities or our, our identity of Edgewood and not feeling guilty about it. We are a great place. You know, if we want to have something on 4th of July, we don't need to feel guilty about that because of Moriarty. Like we, we can do things here. It's okay. And of course, we're many, many times larger. So now at this point that our identity is kind of, it, it needs to come to the surface. It really does. Um, part of having an identity, I think too, is, is um, having a high school, you know? And that's what, if you look at communities, parades, um, patriotism, being proud of your community, a lot of it comes from, from the high school. So that's why I'm saying we really need to connect with EVCA as well. So, and of, co and of course, Edgewood Middle School and, you know, um, the elementaries, but um, it's part of our identity that's coming forward, I think. Can you just imagine what would happen if we had a football team and Friday night football games here? Can you imagine? Wow, that would, that's a, quite a thought. <laughs> well, we're, yeah, very nice pun. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to kind of wrap things up because we're we're running out of time um and i did want to just thank all of you for coming and those people that are participating and attending online for being part of this event and we do have um i could just wait that. we do have a feedback form that we would love your feedback on that Andrea's put together here. And um, just to help us as we do other events in the future, we need input. We'd like to know what worked about today, what you think could be done differently or better um, so that we can make those changes. And I want to invite all of you to encourage other community members to volunteer, to get involved, to attend community events not just as a participant, but to give a couple hours of their time to help support that event. Because we have so many nonprofits in this town that are responsible for most of the events that go on in this town. But you know, then you get the same handful of people over and over and over again, and you get burnout. And that doesn't help us to bring those younger people up into the positions of running events and taking over the things that some of us long timers have been doing for a while. And we're ready. We're ready for you to take over. So, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's not like we're going anywhere. We're always here to consult and, and answer questions and help. But I just want to encourage everybody to, to reach out to your neighbors, to other people you know in the community, get them involved, and, um, and to encourage them to give feedback as well. Because a lot of things do go out on social media asking for input from the community. And we're hopeful that that's a way we reach people. Um, but it's not just a forum for complaining about what we don't have. It's much more productive if what we hear in response is, I wish this was here and here's how I think we can do it. Um, and get other people on that positive bandwagon of how do we do this? How do we make it come to fruition? Because that's how you connect people that don't otherwise know each other. When I first started on Parks and Rec, I was literally brand new to the town. I'd only lived here two months. I didn't know that when I asked about a kid's program that that meant I was going to have to do it. <laughs> I had come from a much larger town, but I was happy to do it because I wanted that for my kids. But I met people I had never known before in my life. And we became a really cohesive group of five volunteers that started all kinds of things in this town, Run Rally and Rock and concerts, the Kite Festival that was the New Mexico Wind Festival back in the day, all of those sorts of things. And so it's great to see those things still continue, but we have so many more ideas and other things that we can get involved in. And that just takes people power, always takes imagination, people power. The funding somehow we're always able to get that to work, but it really takes the volunteers. So, um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to the New Mexico Humanities Council for funding 
this New Mexico Listens program. Thank you to the Santa Fe County League of Women Voters for coming out and bringing your expertise, your technical expertise as well, technology and time. And thank you very much to Andrea and the library for letting us use this facility for putting so much time into making this a successful event. And I will put in one plug for Andrea because she won't do it herself. Volunteers, the library needs volunteers. So if you have an interest and you can give a couple hours a week, how many hours? You asked for four or four hours. Four, just four hours a week. Come and help. Um, it's an easy enough job that Andrea and her staff can train you to do. Um, you get to interact with the community. You get to meet people of all different ages. And you know, if you like quiet, it's a quiet place. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I mean, compared to the big city, right? This this is a relatively nice, you know, peaceful place. There's there's good energy here. There's a lot going on. Andrea does an amazing job keeping all kinds of programs going for our kiddos. All through COVID, when nothing else could happen, Andrea was here for the community with those programs. So congratulations to you for doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have an endless supply of programs. It's, it's truly impressive for such a small town. It's such a great resource and facility. So I'm going to give you the mic if you want to put your own plug in for anything else you need. Um, I won't, but I just want to say uh, now you've activated all my warm fuzzies, but I know we're uh, towards the end of time. And I just wanted to say that these ideas do not have to just exist in this room. Um, go out, talk about it, let people know, like you said, like Linda said, um, we don't have to have the forums to be able to institute change. You can be the change, just like Sherry was saying. And um, I'm really excited about going forward from here. And maybe we can do some more things like this in the future. And I truly, truly appreciate everyone's opinion and input. And um, it was really a team effort. So, and you are part of that team. So thank you so very much. And thank you very much online to everyone and Goyo and Rakan and Irene, Linda. And um, I think I'll uh, do a little Barbie wave. I feel like a <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a pageant or something, <laughs> but thank you. Is there anything else that New Mexico that the league would like to say? I just want to say one more thing. Please have the cinnamon roll on your way out. <laughs> Small town bonus. We have people who bake and bring things. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate it. And thanks to everybody online. You don't have to leave right away if you want to stay and chat with each other or whatever.